Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Geometry Common Core Regents. We're doing this one question at a time. Here is question 11. In the diagram below, EF is parallel to HG. So let's write our little parallel signs. EF is equal to 5. They fill this stuff in. So we have 5 HG, where's HG? Is 12 FI is 1.4x plus 3, and hi is 6.1x minus 6.5. So all that's filled in for us. Now they want to know what is the length of hi. So they want us to find x and figure out this equation here. So how are we going to do that? So the trick here is to realize that these are similar triangles, these two. So since this is parallel ef to hg, this means that both of these lines are being cut by it. A transversal so that gives us all these different kind of congruent angles so we know that this is a congruent angle just based on vertical angles but now with knowing these are parallel and being cut by a transversal we know that alternate interior angles are also congruent so angle G is going to be congruent to angle E and then angle F is congruent to angle H so we know that triangle EF I is similar to triangle HIG by angle angle. Big deal, how is that going to help me find HI? What we know is that the sides are going to be in proportion based on this, because whenever we have similar triangles, it means the sides are in proportion. And I have a whole video on similar triangles if you want to check that out. So now we can make a little proportion with the sides so we can have the base 5 over its side over this little triangle here, triangle EFI. So we have the base of five, and then over 1.4 x plus three, the other triangle, HIG. So we're gonna set that equal to the base on this side, 12, all over its side, 6.1 x minus 6.5. And now we could just solve for x using algebra and cross multiply. So even though we got five, we want to be careful and look back at our question because five is an answer choice. We might, you know, brush to circle that choice number two as our answer, but be careful because remember they're looking for the length of each I, right? So what we actually want to do, what we actually want to do is plug in five into the length for H I 6.1 X minus 6.5. So we have 6.1 X, which now we know is five minus 6.5, which gives us 24. And that's actually gonna be our answer, choice number four. On to question number 12. The square pyramid below models a toy block made of maple wood. Each side of the base measures 4.5 centimeters, so let's write that in, 4.5 centimeters. And the height of the pyramid is 10 centimeters. So let's just draw that, height equals 10 centimeters. If the density, density is equal, of the maple is equal to 0.676 grams per centimeters cubed, what is the mass of the block to the nearest tenth of a gram? So we're looking for the mass. They give us the density. So the, the density formula is mass over volume. So we know that the density is 0.676 and they want to know what the mass is, m, over the over volume. So we can find volume, right? So the volume of, this is a square base pyramid, so a square base pyramid. So that is just b squared times h over three, where b is the base, which in this case is 4.5 squared over the height, which is 10. So just plug that into your calculator and you'll get 
So this is the volume. So we can actually plug this into our density formula over here. And then we can cross multiply again to find M. So we could just do 67.5 times the density that they gave us. And this will be equal to the mass. If you plug that in, you'll get that the mass is equal to 45.63. But notice they went into the nearest tenth, so this is just going to be equal to 45.6, which is choice one. So that's a lot of formulas to know, to remember. You have to remember the volume square base of a pyramid and the density formula. On to question number 13. In the diagram below of right triangle EFG, altitude FH intersects hypotenuse EG. So whenever we see altitude, we're just gonna, we know that this is gonna be a right angle at H, right? So this whole thing is a right angle. FH equals nine, EF equals 15. What is EG? So we wanna find this length here. Just basic Pythagorean theorem, we could find EH right here. So let's just do that. So we have A squared plus B squared plus C squared. Just filling in the sides, we have nine squared plus, and then we have this length here. Let's call it x. x squared equals 15 squared. So we know that right here, this section is gonna be 12. But we still don't know what this whole section is. So we could call this y. So we got that part. So now what's the next part? So let's look at the, these two different triangles that we have here. We have this big triangle and then this smaller triangle, right? So we have the big original triangle. So if we look back, it says right triangle EFG. So we know that this big triangle is a right triangle right here. This is a right angle. We have X, E, this is going to be 12 plus y for this entire length here. This is 15, and we don't know this length. And then we have our another smaller triangle that's also a right triangle. And this is 9, this is 15, and this is 12. Okay, so looking at this, if we were to rotate So if we were to rotate our triangle and make it look like this one, kind of flip and rotate it. So when we flip and rotate our triangle from here, EFG, we're just gonna get it, we're just flipping and rotating so we can easily match these up and show that the sides are in proportion. So based on this, you can see that we have a right angle on each triangle and then Notice that we also have an overlapping angle E. So we have angle E, and that, that's why we flipped it this way. So see, we have angle E, angle E, and we have our right angle, right angle. So we can easily see that these two triangles are similar and by angle, angle, and that their sides are in proportion because all similar triangles have sides that are in proportion. So now we can easily set up our proportion so let's do that. So we have our side 15 over the hypotenuse of the first big triangle, and we're setting it equal to the other side 12 over our hypotenuse, which is 15 of the little triangle. And then we're just gonna cross multiply and find this value for y to eventually find the value of this whole side. So we have 15 times 15, which will give us 225. And then we have 12 times 12 plus y. So we get a value of 6.75. So again, don't get too excited and circle that first choice because we are not done yet, right? But they want the value of EG. So this whole thing, which is 12 plus Y. So now we just need to add 12 and we end up getting 18.75, which is choice three.
And that is our answer. So this one's tricky, but just, just practice these kinds of questions. These come up a lot where there's a triangle with three triangles. So there's the first triangle on the outside and then a triangle on the left and triangle on the right. And they're always similar to each other. And they're always gonna involve some kind of proportion. So it's tricky and takes a lot of steps, but just be on the lookout for those because they come up a lot. Question number 14. In triangle ABC below, D is a point on AB and E is a point on AC, such that DE is parallel to BC. So we have these two parallel lines and then notice uh, there's lines coming out of it, even though it's a triangle, this can be thought of as a transversal, where we have different uh, angles that are equal to each other, like alternate interior angles and alternate exterior angles and things like that. So, um, so keep that in mind when we look at the following answer choices. So they want to know which statement is always true. So when we look at this, we have to ask ourselves, angle ADE and ABC are right angles? Okay, no, it looks like they're right angles in this example, but that's not always going to be the case because all they just said all we know is that DE is parallel to BC in this case. So, no. So, like AB could be at an incline, right? So, no, to choice one. And triangle ADE is similar to triangle ABC. So, this little triangle is going to be similar to this. Is that always true? So, let's see. So, ADE, so alternate interior angles. This would be equal to this, and A, D, E. Notice they also share this angle A. These triangles are similar by angle, angle. So we know that this is gonna be choice two. So if you're looking for more on this test, check out the playlist in the link below. And thanks for stopping by. Happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating.